All right. Uh, this question, I'm going to answer two questions in this particular video. Who do I think are the best martial artists was one. The other one is who is my favorite mixed martial artist. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, there are some people who will not like what I'm going to say here, uh, in particularly my people, but I, I want to get people to understand that there is no one blacker than me on on uh, social media, on YouTube at least, all right, black and Muslim. I've gotten a great deal of, of flack uh, from both black and white people. Uh, I am an intellectual. Um, I am not a super patriot. Um, there is racism in America. Uh, black people have been treated like crap. Uh, there is a great deal of bias uh, when it comes down to the martial arts. Uh, a white person like Eddie Bra, uh, Eddie Bra, uh, who, not right, uh, um, Joe Rogan will be seen as being a great martial artist, whereas a person like me will be questioned on every every little thing. There is no one who talks about racism more than I do in the martial arts on social media. That being said, I am honest about certain things. When I'm asked a question, I answer them. And I answer them based on a person's ability. So the question that came to me was, who do I think are the best martial artists, right? And who is my favorite mixed martial artist? Okay, first of all, uh, when I say who's the best martial artist, I'm talking about those people who take something, uh, and not necessarily the most creative, but bring a, a flavor to their training in the martial arts, okay? Now, black people are the most creative, right? You can look at Israel and Desanya, you can look at the, the striking, the wrestling, whatever we do, we bring a certain flavor to it that is more exotic and more exciting. That's over there. As a culture, though, the culture that I have trained with in Kyokushin Karate, and wrestling, those are the two genres that I've trained with people from this particular culture. I would have to say culture-wise, Russians bring a little bit of what it is to be Russian to every martial art they engage in. The, if you look at their Kyokushin Karate, their Kyokushin Karate has done well, if not better, against the Japanese when, who, who created it. Uh, uh, Oyama was Korean, but the Japanese, for the most part, it's the Japanese uh, who um, who excel at it, who are students of it, right, and and instructors of it. When you look at wrestling, one can one has to say that the Russians do a great job uh, wrestling. Uh, people of the former Soviet Union, the Uzbeks and the Kazakhs, of course, uh, they are great also. But I'm talking about as a culture whether it's judo, whether it's wrestling, whether it's different styles of karate, you find that Russians will take it and they bring this kind of madness, this kind of manic, a training flavor uh, to everything they do. And I know this personally because I have trained with Russians who came over from Russia to fight in Kyokushin tournaments. I have trained with them. I have trained in wrestling as a teenager in some of these wrestling camps and some of the people were Russian instructors who would bring their sons uh, from, from Russia or send for their sons to take part in the camps. So when it comes down to the culture, right, they're not the most creative. The most creative is our black people. And I don't think people would be surprised to know that they bring a certain flavor, a certain rhythm to everything they do. But, but as, a, as a culture, bringing a, a, a certain constant flavor that is across the board. Um, you look at Valentino Shashenko, I forget how you pronounce her name. Is there much difference between what she brings and what, other, and what Russian men bring? There is a flavor to what they do. When they take everything, no matter what martial art it is, they take that martial art and they bring this manic desire to be the best uh, to that martial art. So much so that sometimes it's hard to even recognize what they're doing compared to even what the founders uh, uh, were doing, right? So judo, Russian judo, it's, it's hardcore. Russian wrestling, hardcore. Russian karate, hardcore. Everything they do, they bring a certain flavor from that culture, from being Russian, as they say, right? From that, uh, they bring a certain flavor. They are some of the greatest martial artists as a group that I've seen.
then I've had the pleasure of training with. Uh, when we talk about um, um, who's my favorite mixed martial artist, I want to say this. I am not talking about a person who was the first to put punching, kicking, and grappling together. That's not what I'm saying. I am not talking about a person who was the first to bring punching, kicking, and grappling together. All right? They may have done that, but were crude in some way. But were crude in, in the way they did it. Right? When I mention this person, and I say this is my favorite mixed martial artist, right? I am saying that he had world-class hands, world-class kicks, world-class grappling. Okay. That man is Frank Shamrock. Not Ken. Not his older brother. Frank Shamrock. Frank Shamrock, to me, was uh, the prototype mixed martial artist. Watch him in his prime, and he was the prototype mixed martial artist. All right? Watch his fight with Tito Ortiz. Classic fight. Watch his fight with Tito Ortiz, because it would also show you something else. And that is Frank Shamrock, in my opinion, had the best guard. And he was a wrestler. He had the best guard in in, uh, in uh, mixed martial arts. He had a good active guard, okay? Uh, he started submissions early. Um, he did not, he hesitated, uh, he, he, he went out of his way to make sure both shoulder blades were not on, on the canvas, uh, which means that when he was being picked up and, and dumped, he would almost always land on his side. Uh, transitions from closed guard to to open guard, from open guard to get to get a sweep, to get to the top position, or just to get up. Frank Shamrock had the best active guard uh, in mixed martial arts to me. Uh, world class hands, good boxing ability. His boxing ability reminded me of how to, the way black boxers box in the street. He had a very urban way of throwing his hands uh, and kicking. Great kicks. Great kicks that he learned from a Muay Thai uh, fighter, uh, Marie Smith, black guy, uh, who joined the alliance, uh, the group uh, founded, I think, by Ken Shamrock, right, and attended by Frank Shamrock, who did most of the teaching, um, so Frank says, right? But uh, Frank Shamrock was the prototype uh, MMA fighter, and he remains, therefore, my favorite MMA fighter um, of all time. Um, I did say that the most vicious, the one, one of the most eye-opening things that I ever saw was Vandalay Silva, but he's not my favorite uh, martial art, mixed martial artist. The prototype mixed martial artist uh, is, is Frank Shamrock, all right? And why? Because he had world-class hands, world-class grappling, world-class kicks, all right? And put them all together in a very polished, polished package. All right, my name is Sabe Carmen, Walker Encyclopedia of Martial Arts. I'll see you next.